Hello, welcome to a GibbsCAM demonstration from Midwest Cam Solutions. This demonstration is for volume mill wireframe and volume mill solids. First, I'd like to start off by introducing you to the Milling Advisor. This is a free app you can download at volumemill.com. This app will help users achieve proper speeds and feeds with no knowledge. So if you're cutting stainless steel, you have a half inch tool, and we leverage deep cuts with volume mill and small radial cuts. You can set the tool length, the type of part holding, the tool holder. When these values are set, the speeds and feeds are given below. You have conservative and aggressive. Your entry feed rate is given at the very bottom, which is useful when you're doing a pocket or a sliding or helixing into a closed area. You can slow the tool path and the feed rate to protect the tool. This is the part we're going to use in the presentation. It's a discrete solid that I built in GibbsCam. First, we're going to grab some geometry. So I'm going to select some edges and extract geometry. Next, I'm going to create a cuboid based on the stock dimensions and select the outer profile and extract that. I'll delete that solid. We need to merge the geometry for the outside and the, the part and the stock profile. Also need to extract geometry off these two pockets, so we'll extract that. The outside parameter, we're going to toggle that to air walls. In these open pockets, we're going to toggle those open walls to air walls. We now have all the geometry ready for the machining. Next, we'll grab a process for a volume mill tool path. This will be a half inch end mill set for wire. In the process, this is predefined, which you can save and reuse these processes. The RPM, 12,000 RPMs, 450 inches a minute. We have this all set up. It's going to leave stock. 800 inches per minute for high feed repositioning and staying close to the floor. We're going to select the outside of the shape of the stock and the island and say do it. It'll start calculating the tool path. The tool path is a tricordal style tool path. The volume mill determines if it's faster to use high feed versus rapid drivers. Each one of these little turns it takes will have a different feed rate. I'm going to slow down the RPM here, the, the rendering here, and watch this. It takes a very gentle, smooth entrance into the cutting. Never shocks the tool. You'll hear the same harmonic tone the whole time the tool is in cut. Tools will last 10 times longer, and the speeds and feeds and the cycle time reduction 40-50% on average. Well, now we have this done. Let's uh, set the parameters in the process to start from here and cut down to the bottom. I'll go a little bit past the bottom. We're just going to select the, uh, the part shape and the stock. Say so do that. That'll cut the outside area of the part. Next we'll change the depth now to the open pocket depth. And click these two shapes. That'll cut those cutouts out. Get CPR, and rewind and play. So the volume mill with wire is very easy to use. What's nice about the wire, if you don't have a, sol have a solid, you can just draw the geometry and cut your part. If you have the solid, you can extract geometry easily and quickly and get the job done. This concludes the wire portion of the presentation. I'm going to delete my ops and uh, the tool and also hide the solid and delete all the geometry and bring the solid back. Now with volume mill solids, we can go to a process for volume mill that was built for using solid models. Now the differences between solids and, and geometry is that I can leave surface stock. We also can engage ridge height and staircase up drafted walls to clean them up. The flat cut control with solid models allows me to cut after lower depth. So if I cut the lower depth, goes up, cuts the next flat, and then ridge heist is up accordingly. We're going to set the first process here just to cut down to the first level. And you can just slip, select the model and say do it. It'll calculate the tool path. If you want to use geometry, you can. And it will actually uh, control the area that you want to cut. So you can do 3D features with geometry as a selection. You can also leverage the air walls within the geometry selection as well to control open-sided areas. 
with a solid model. Very useful and very easy to control. So what this toolpath just did now is it starts on the outside, it's working its way all around, then it's going to ridge height up the drafted area. It'll try cordal out the flat areas and continue ridge heighting. Let's open the process up now, tell it we're going to cut from here and go down to the bottom and it'll go a little bit deeper. We'll say do that. Now what this is going to do, it's going to take the full depth first, leveraging the entire flute length, then hit flats at their lower depth, will come up and hit these two open areas. So no matter how many open areas you had with flats, it would remove all the stock for us without having to do any work. Um, no matter how hard the part is, volume mill will rough off the hardest part very simply. So if I want to rewind this and play it, we can watch it cut entirely now. So it's got ridge heighting, cuts the flats at the lower depth, goes down to the next level, and works its way up. Volume Mill also does material only style toolpaths, very nice. Let's go grab a Volume Mill toolpath for a quarter inch that's going to cut material only from a half inch tool. And say do that. This will do bottom up ridge height control with materially cutting to smooth out the corners and get the remaining stock that is not needed. This is the bottom up materially tool path. That kind of concludes a little presentation. I hope this video will help you get started with your volume mill and start saving time and money today. Bye now and have a great day.